All right, so today what we're going to do is extend our Rails project a little bit. We already have a controller that had a, remember we created a Dave controller and a Say controller, and the request came into this controller, but before it got to the controller, it went where? Routes, very good. So the request comes from the browser through the routes file, and then from the routes into the controller, from the controller to where? The other thing, right? <laughs> the views. So the, the controller goes into the views. The views are what actually display the HTML, and that HTML then gets pushed out to the browser. So that loop has got to be in your mind all the time. <laughs> So we have this, let's, uh, let's run our project to make sure it all works still. I already had it open, I guess. <laughs> all right, so let's go to uh, localhost and go to one of our controllers and see if it all still works. Works good. So this is some of the ERB that I had, which stands for what? What is ERB? Embedded. Embedded Ruby. Okay, so that's code that I put in my view itself. So in this one, it's the say hello controller. And so this is some ERB looping, adding. I can do any kind of Ruby expression I want inside of this. And we talked about the link to last week. Right, So this let us add links from page to page. But our page looks kind of uh, ugly, right? There's no CSS. There's no Chrome about it. They call the Chrome the uh, stuff, the UI around our uh, dynamic pieces that we're printing out here. So what we're going to do today is to add some HTML so our page looks nicer. All right. So to do that, I'm, I'm first going to go get some HTML. And I'm going to use this free HTML5 template from freehtml5templates.com. I'm going to use this cowboy up just for fun. And so I'm going to download that. And that downloads a zip file that has all of the assets I need for this particular page. I've got images here uh, that are required. I've got the actual HTML that has the layout, uh, the license, which you can look at, and then some CSS styles. All right, so all of this together is what builds up that one page. So if I open that here locally, uh, it's going to open it up in Opera. Which doesn't oh it doesn't work because it's in a zip file, so let's uh, let's copy that to my desktop, so I can play with that a little more. And look at my cowboy up here we go. So now if I open it, I see this has all the HTML. It's got CSS for this drop down menus. And that's what I want my website to look like. Okay, So I can look at the source of this. Uh, that's all HTML. You guys should be able to write this in your sleep. All this HTML is what I need to have in my Rails project in some position. So that's what we're going to work on right now. So um, move that out of the way. Let's uh, Let's talk about where we put some of this information. So Rails has this concept of an asset pipeline. And everything dealing with HTML, images, JavaScript, and CSS, the style sheets, are stored in this app slash assets folder. So all the images go in the images folder. All the JavaScript files go in the JavaScript folder. And what do you think goes in the style sheets folder? Yeah, take a guess, right? So uh, as we look at this, you see I've already got some files in here. These are 
were created when I generated the controller. So by default, it says, oh, you want a controller, so uh, you must have wanted some CSS as well. So it created this CSS file that I can start to add CSS into. Now, uh, what is this? I, I understand what say.css is, but what is .scss? What? Yep, Syntact it's SAS, or uh, Syntactically Awesome Style Sheets. SCSS is another version of SAS. So we'll be talking more about this later, but it lets us have more programmability in the CSS. I can have variables and, and methods and things inside of my CSS, and, and it makes my CSS a lot easier to write. It's very nice. And since uh, we're going to use JavaScript, on most pages now in modern web pages, uh, it also gives us a place to put JavaScript for those particular controllers. So let's start by moving our assets into the right place. So the first thing I need to do is take these two style sheets. Where do you think I should put those? Style. Under style sheets, right? So I'm going to copy these, drag them over to style sheets, and it says, you want to move those? Yes, let's move those over there. So now I've got my two style sheets. And I need my HTML open. We'll play with that one in a minute. Where do you think I put all my images? In my images folder. So I'm going to take those, drag them to my images folder, say OK. Bada boom, bada bing. I got my images inside of my project now. So I can access that, that information. All right, any questions on that so far? All right, so now we have to think about the HTML itself. So uh, it gets a little more complicated. Uh, Rails has this concept of a layout. Or if you're doing ASP, it's like a master page. So uh, in our view, it's all related to how the HTML gets shipped out to the user. Let's look at the layout folder. In the layout folder, there's this file called application.html.erb. So open that file. Let's uh, get rid of all those other files. This is now a, an HTML rough body of what the page is going to look like. So I've got the doc type. By default, Rails uses what version of HTML now? Five, right? That's an HTML5 doc type. And then we've got HTML start and stop. I've got a head start and stop with some titles and some other things. I've got my body. And so the, uh, the rest of the dynamically generated stuff gets put inside the body. So remember last quarter in Ruby 2, we talked about the yield statement a little bit. A method can yield to something else and that something else then gets inserted into that place. So if, if I'm displaying my, my say hello uh, file, this information here, everything in this view, gets inserted into this yield. So that yield gets replaced with all of the content from my views here. So it separates out the dynamically generated stuff from my controller view and inserts it into the layout of my web page. So typically, web pages all look the same, right? I go from products to blogs to whatever. The outside of the page looks the same. That's what we call the Chrome, or the, the good-looking stuff around the dynamic content. So typically, only the dynamic content changes as we go from page to page. So that's why Rails does it this way. It splits it up so the view this is the dynamic stuff, and it gets inserted into the layout. So let's just go look at a page and look at the source here. This is what gets generated from that layout page. So you see the doc type, you see the head, uh, you see all of these other things that got inserted. And then you see inside the body, this is all the stuff that got inserted from the view file. So the view file for this is say hello, 
is this. This and this text. Oops. This and this text are identical. Anything I put in here shows up in the, in replacing the yield statement in the layout. Everybody see that so far? The layout is like a master page or a master template in a PowerPoint slide or a ASP.NET uh, page, master page. Uh, it lets us not have to repeat ourselves with the surrounding HTML. Any questions on that? All right. So I can change the layout, though. This is just an HTML file. And it takes this and scrunches the rest of the stuff together into one full HTML package that it sends out to the browser. So I can do stuff like this. Uh, hi, Dave. And in my page now, when I reload this, I'm going to see hi, Dave, everywhere. This hi, Dave showed up on every page. If I go to say goodbye, It says, goodbye, Dave, but it has a hi, Dave, because that comes from the layout. The rest of the stuff comes from the view. Everybody with me on that? All right. So why did the background color change? CSS. CSS, right? I added some CSS here, and it automatically included these uh, styles.css, <laughs> which probably had this color. Here we go. We've got a background color of uh, this orange, horrible orange, right? I might have to change that to blue. But that was applied to the body style, and so it automatically got included into my project. All right, anybody with me so far? Yes. Say yes, Dave. <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, uh, if I wanted to add HTML to every single page, which file would I put it in? My template, my layout, my application.html.erb. So in this file is where I'm going to be changing some things. So let's start by getting that text. And let's just open this uh, index.html in Notepad just so I can see it, something else. and we can start to take some of this information and putting it in the layout itself, all right? So let's start with the body, the main portion of the HTML. We'll, for, we'll skip this stuff for now. So inside the body, I have this main div that, that has uh, everything in it, right? Inside that div, I've got some HTML header information, HTML5, that's a new uh, HTML5 tag. I've got a nav tag with a bunch of stuff in it. Um, now, where is my main content? Where is the stuff that looks... Where is the stuff on this page that is dynamic? Which part would you think would be dynamic? All right, so not the nav. The nav is going to show up on every page, right? Uh, this is probably going to show up on every page, the right-hand uh, stuff. And this bottom footer will likely show up on every page, right? So the dynamic stuff is everything in between here. All of this stuff is going to be the dynamic portion of the page. So that's what we want to fill in with each particular view that the controller ships out. So if I look at my HTML now, where do I find that? Well, there happens to be main content and sidebar area. So this is the main content. Here's the sidebar. So the sidebar is not what I want. This is the only stuff in here that is uh, dynamic, these two articles right here. So I'm going to take this out for now and consider that being the dynamic portion of it. So if I were to split this in half and display the top half and then some dynamic stuff in the bottom half, where would I split it? Right where I'm at, right? So I gave you a hint here. This is 
going to be everything above the yield, and this will be everything below the yield. So let's take the bottom part first. I'm going to go all the way down to the uh, this free template. What is, what is the key this one, uh, because I'm going to keep this section up here. So this section has a closing section. Between the sections is going to be my. I can't. You can if you want, but this is assuming that this is all my content. So I want all my content to be right in this section, because that's the way uh, their HTML was created. All of this stuff is inside of a section. So I want to keep this section. You can throw it away if you want. You have to figure out based on your design where where to cut that in half. That's probably the hardest part. So I'm going to take this piece all the way down to the free HTML templates and cut that out. And then I'm going to go put that, since it's going to go on every page, it's going to go on what file? Application. It's going to go below my yield because this is my dynamic stuff. So this is the lower half of my page. What the heck was that? So here's my yield. This is my dynamic stuff in between this section here. The yield will now spit out everything that's in the, in the view itself. So now I need the top part. So I want everything from the body to that point here, including the nav. So all of that data is going to come. I'm going to cut that out and put it above the yield. All right, so now I've got a full page with some dynamic junk in the middle. I'm going to remove my high Dave. And my yield now is right in the middle of those sections. Everything else is, is all happy. All right, so let's reload my page and see what it looks like. All right, we're getting there. So here's, uh, here's a page. I've got the goodbye Dave. Where did that come from? What file did that come from? My view file for the goodbye action in my say controller. So I look in views, say goodbye, that's where the code is. So that's where that comes from. But the rest of it is all coming from the, uh, the HTML that I just copied in there. So I've got my right uh, a side part here. I've got my footer. I've got my top part and, and my nav. Everything still works. It's got some issues. My, my image, you can't find my image, and we'll work on those as we go through this. Uh, but the main port part of my HTML, notice it's non-responsive. Isn't that terrible? Should have got a responsive one. Is uh, everything else, the structure is basically there. I've got the majority of my page built. So now if I go to a new page, like say hello, the dynamic content goes inside of this just where I want it. The rest of the stuff stays the same. And if I, I can even link to Dave Teach, and it shows that's the content that I got from my Dave controller and my Teach action. Right? Isn't that cool? I made a big step. It now kind of looks like a web page. Any questions on that? All right. So I didn't go. The, the things that I have left are all of this stuff here. All right. So I don't need the uh, HTML tag. That's built into my, my script over here already. Uh, they have the language equals English. You can put that over if you want. Uh, might as well put that in my HTML tag here. Then I've got my title. The title is uh, lecture. We need to have this so I can see it better. Then I've got a, a character set, meta character, so I probably want that. I'm going to assume that I'm using UTF-8. So I'm going to put that in my head. 
I've got my title. I've already got that from my project. And then I've got this uh, if IE shiv. They call this a shiv, a way to make IE work. So we'll put that in there. <laughs> Gotta have that in there. So that's a that's an if IE tag, and that script will only be loaded if uh, if you're running Internet Explorer. So I need that in there. Now the rest of this stuff are the physical styles that I'm going to include. All right. So I have one for print, and I have one for screen opposite. So I need this information in there. Now I could just take these and copy and paste them into my uh, header here. So I could put them here. But Rails has a different way of doing this. Um, they allow you, because in the assets folder, remember we talked about this, I have this folder called JavaScript and style sheets. They like to keep things separate. So I, would, I put all my style sheets in this style sheet folder. And by default, it's loading. This is, what does this tell you is we have here? What, what is this line with these symbols here in front of it? It's going to do something, right? That's ERB. That's embedded Ruby. That means that this is a method in Ruby. Style sheet link tag. And it takes some options, like the name of the style sheet to include, what media you want it to apply to. And then this is new for Rails 4, which we won't get into for several weeks, called Turbo Links. Uh, and we do the same thing for the JavaScript tag. So this will generate all the JavaScript tags we need based on this information. Okay, So it's only including the application style sheet. So if I look in my style sheet, there happens to be a style sheet in here called application.css. So let's open that and see what that is. What they call this, this is, I could actually put CSS in here, but it's designed to be what they call a manifest file. A manifest file is a file that has links to a bunch of other files. So I only have to include this one file, and all of the other files in the directory get included automatically. And this, even though this looks like a comment, that looks like a comment, right? This is actually code. So the Ruby parser looks at this star equals, and it says, oh, I want to run this method called require self. So that means include myself, include the application.css file. So I could actually put you know, body um, and put some color uh, inside of this. Uh, that's not how you do it. Uh, inside of this CSS file. It, it is a CSS file. But typically, we only want to require other text files, other CSS files. The next line is a piece of code also. It says, run the method called require tree and pass it the parameter of a dot. So in, in directory structures on a computer, what does the dot directory mean? It actually means the current level, okay? the current level where I'm at, where this file is located, include everything. So require tree means require and include all of these files that are CSS files, even if they're in a folder. So I could have another folder in here called special CSS or something like that. And it would include recursively down the folder structure and include all of the CSS files for me. Okay, so yeah, they're included alphabetically. <laughs> so if you want something ahead of time, you'd have to include change the name, or um, you could override the application and just include the style sheet here. I could just do this. This is just HTML. I can put the actual style sheet in here, but I typically don't want to do that. Yes, absolutely. Just HTML. I could cut that and put this down here if I had some real thing that had to be uh, 
included after everything else, that would work as well. Okay? So that, that takes care of the style sheet information. If I had JavaScript, the JavaScript works the same way. It's including an application.js file. If I look in here, there happens to be an application.js file. And this also is a manifest file. But notice the comments are different. And this assets was something I was not in favor of. I'm not quite sure I like this. But the this is not a comment. This is code. This says require the library jQuery. And jQuery is built into Rails now. Uh, they've decided on jQuery as opposed to prototype and scriptaculous and all those other libraries. So that's kind of default. It builds in jQuery for you. And it includes the jQuery UJS file, uh, which I can't remember what that is offhand. The, yeah, OK. Thanks. <laughs> and then we have require turbo links, which again, we're not going to talk about for now. And then at the band, we're going to call the method require tree with a dot. And that says include every single other .js file in here. Now. The SCSS stood for SAS, so I could have programmatic style sheets. The JS.coffee is another version of JavaScript that is above JavaScript. It's, an, it's a language that lets you write more expressive JavaScript. And the compiler, there's a coffee compiler that takes that file and compiles it into normal JavaScript. Because the browsers don't understand the language coffee, they understand JavaScript only. So it has to compile that all into readable JavaScript that the browser can read. And we will likely not do any coffee here in Rails for this class. But it's, a, it's just a way of adding some features that the JavaScript language doesn't have. OK, that's basically it. And inside of this, I can do normal, simple JavaScript, and I don't have to do anything else. It, will, it knows it's normal JavaScript, and it's fine. Same as these. I didn't have to do anything to my style sheets. And it will uh, treat this as if it was uh, SAS, but only if I change the name. So let's change the name of these, just in case I want to play with that later. We'll do a little bit of that. Let's uh, rename this file under refactor rename. And we'll put the .scss file at the end of it. And the same with the print. Ah. And we'll actually do some uh, uh, SAS later to show you how really cool it is. Once you go SAS, you'll never go back. It's the only way to write style sheets anymore. All right, so, oops. So now I've got everything. My application layout file has everything included. I've uh, added my little script, and now I should be able to reload my page. And it won't look too much different than what I had, but everything is in the right place. My project is now complete. All right, any questions on that step? Getting an existing website template into Rails. A lot of little steps you have to do. Yeah, it's, all steps. It doesn't look all that hard. it's not too hard. It's really simple. The hardest part probably is determining what, where do I split that HTML file in half? Because I need half of it above the yield and half of it below the yield. So it's an intuitive thing. Oh, yeah, it saves a ton of time. Yeah. Right. Right. If you tried to do this as static pages, every time you change the nav, you'd have to change it on 47 pages. So that's one of the nice things about Rails or PHP or .NET is that it builds a framework around our entire website. Yeah. Yeah, that's the file that you're going to convert. That's the main, take your main HTML file, whatever it is, 
and uh, copy one of those. If you did this, if you're taking it from your assignment last quarter, you had a different file for each page, like a products file and a blog file and a, all of those different files. Just take one of them and convert that one file into your master page. Yeah, into your layout. That's what we call it. Right. Yes. Yes. All right. Any questions on that? Fun stuff, eh? Hey, eh? So let's uh, let's fix up some things. Um, let's fix up the image first. So uh, Rails has some nicer ways of creating these tags. Uh, I can I can have a, this image use an, uh, some Ruby language code instead of a method that will automatically know where this file is. So um, and we'll get we'll gain some nice things from that. So instead of this, I'm going to use some ERB, and I want to output the image path to where that's a that's a method, and I want to call what is the name of my image? Cowboy up. All right, that's the name of the image that I want to load. I don't have to tell it where it is. It's going to assume that everything is in my images folder. All right, so let's just uh, do that and comment this out. Let's see if I can comment that out without a, no, probably not. Let's do a HTML comment around here. And see if that fixes our image problem. See, isn't that much better? <laughs> uh, I used the wrong method. Pause. It's a uh, image tag instead of there we go image tag and we're going to pass that so sorry about that that will darn well better work there we go so using the image tag it that is a method much like our link to that we created last week the image tag is a method that takes a string as a parameter and creates these, this image tag for us. So let's look and see what the tag actually looks like in the, the uh, source. All right, so here is the, the source tag down here. Uh, alt, Im it says image. It said alt equals cowboy up. Now, where did it get that? I didn't put an alt tag in there. Right, it used the, the capital version of just the file name itself without the extension. Isn't that nice? Now I don't have to remember to put a stinking alt tag in there. I can change that if I want, but it, it tries to fix errors for you automatically. Then it says, okay, your source is included in the assets folder, and it's called cowboyup.jpg. So let's add the width and height first. Uh, uh, images like to have width and height because the browsers can display them faster, right? It lays out enough space for it so they can render the rest of the page, and then while it's getting the image file, the rest of the page can load up. So we need a width and a height. So to do that, let's go look at the method named image tag, and so you get used to using the uh, Rails API. So it's api.rubyonrails.org, and we'll go to image tag. And this is all of the information that I can do. So I can give it an alt tag. If not, it uses the name of the file. I can give it a size, which is given as a string of a width times height. All right, so here's some examples down here. The size 
as width and height. Now, what does what does this look like? This is just Ruby code. What does that signify? What type of element is this? It looks like CSS. No. In the Ruby language itself. So let me write it for you differently. Uh, so if I want the size, it's a it's a symbol, but it's also a hash. Okay. So I do width times height, 940 times 200. So this is a hash symbol. So I'm passing a single element into this hash. I can also apply additional alt tag. Uh, Dave's a cowboy. Can't even spell cowboy. So these two different uh, hash elements will get passed into this image tag method, and it will create a different tag. So let's... Uh, Let's go to, where's my lecture? So now if I look at the source, let's look at the, reload the source. It says alt is now Dave's a cowboy. It's got a height. And then it's, oops, whoa. Sorry about that. That was annoying. Then it's got a uh, a width of 940 and a height of 200. Um, so that's one of the ways I can add this information. Now, what this is a new way of writing. This came with uh, Ruby 193, a new way of writing the hash symbol. So this is. The, a symbol, size with a colon after it, is a symbol as well as colon size, only when you're referencing it as a hash table. So you're going to see this a lot. I prefer the old way the, with the hash rocket, the equal sign greater than, but this is shorter. So Ruby's all about trying to save some characters. So they changed it. So this together is the same thing as writing this. All right, so that's the same thing as doing uh, size colon 940 by 200. All right, that's the same. And so I've saved, look at that, three characters. <whistles> Serious savings there. I don't know why they did that. It's annoying to me, but since that's what I learned on. And that's what you guys learned on. Yeah, three bytes, so. Do it however you want. The problem is you're going to see generated code that uses this. So you're going to have to realize that uh, that is a hash symbol, and that's the value. So that's the key. That's the value. That's the key. That's the value. Remember hashes. All right. Any questions on that? All right. So we could go and continue on any image down here. Uh, I would convert to that image tag. So these would have to be converted as well uh, in order for them to load correctly. So we'll do that, uh, and then we'll work on some more things tomorrow on this. So any questions?